Welcome everybody to this week's episode of the Directed IRA podcast. It's my honor to introduce the CEO of Directed IRA, the most infamous, Matt Swanson. Was that too much, Matt, to bring out and start the show? That's okay. I like that. You know, last place I spoke, they did a walk-up music, you know, when they bring you on stage. And uh, what do you want to know my walk-up music, what my song ah, is? I'd like to know. Yeah. Kickstart My Heart by Motley Crue. You know that one? It's great, great like guitar at the beginning. Da, na, 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 na. Anyways, yeah. Uh, yeah, that was my. Well, what's your walk-up song if you had one? You know, boy, I've got to get. I've got to. You know, I have no idea. I, I've got to get a good one. I'll think about that now. For before we screw around too much here, for any of you that have never listened to our podcast, yes, we try to provide extremely accurate and informative information, but keep it light and fun. We're both tax lawyers, partners in the law firm KQS Lawyers for close to 15 years now, and the officers of directedira.com and Matt Sorensen, of course, the CEO. That's why I jokingly introduced him because he's amazing. Matt's also the author of this self-directed IRA handbook. I've got my own few books there on Amazon, and Matt and I just love Main Street America, Small Business America, pretty much hate Wall Street, and so if that's your feeling, you're at the right place. And we have been helping clients self-direct their accounts for close to 20 years. And so, Matt, I mean, that's, yeah. people got to listen to the show. It's the best. Yeah. I mean, this is all about self-directing and we've been breaking it down. We'll always continue to do it. So um, we're hitting some of the core topics on these initial episodes. And this is probably the most utilized tool in the self-directed toolkit, if you, if you will. All right. This is like the screwdriver, maybe in the toolkit. The IRA maybe, LLC. Maybe it's a, a yeah, the IRA LLC, what we're going to talk about today. Yeah, I'm sorry. Is, yeah. And maybe it's a, maybe it's a power, you know, the power tool, maybe. Yeah. A drill, well, you know. Yeah, I think, I, I, you know, again, I we're, we're going into some unique areas today because since <laughs> I'm not a contractor, I'm just a hack on the weekends. What would be the most used tool in a toolbox? It would, it would have to be either a hammer or one of those screwdrivers, but the IRA LLC, if you self-direct an IRA and you're not using an LLC, the time will come very quickly. Yeah. Um, and it's not for every investment, but mm -hmm. it's for a lot. So some people call it the checkbook control IRA or a checkbook IRA. Um, we call it an IRA LLC because it's two things. It's your self-directed IRA and an LLC. And we're going to we're gonna break it down and tell you how to use it, what you can and can't do, dumb things people do that you can't that are wrong. Um, we'll talk about partnering, all those good things. How well, Matt, now, since many of you may know this um, already, but, oh, by the way, a couple little um, other housekeeping items. We record this every week for uh, the podcast on iTunes and Stitcher and other platforms, as Spotify. well as for YouTube. Pardon, you said for what? Else? I say Spotify, you know, Spotify. they're close to an endorsement contract with us. So I just want to not leave them out in case they were listening. Yeah, there we go. And, uh, <laughs> and then also, of course, for YouTube. And uh, YouTube is a big deal to us. We think it's pretty fun to get a Diet Coke and a bowl of popcorn and watch some of these same podcasts on YouTube. Sometimes we'll put up a whiteboard behind us. Um, but yeah. for the most part, we try to keep it non-whiteboard uh, visual so that it doesn't screw up those podcast listeners on a commute. Um, but anyway, you can catch it on all those venues we do ask please if you find this helpful subscribe so whenever we put out a new podcast or a new video you get a ping and that means on youtube hitting the bell icon uh matt i got exciting news Ooh. today it could be today our producer Corey in the in the studio he's giving me updates by the hour i might hit my silver play button today Oof, that's a hundred thousand subscribers yep now I, as soon as I, I get my play button, who are these like, hundred thousand people out there? <laughs> There's a hundred thousand suckers out there. But then I thought, where's Dave Ramsey? Has he got Ooh. his gold he's button? He, he's at 1.9 million. Uh, he's like 20 times more than me. Now he's a little older than me and he's been out longer than me on the platform. Yeah. But, but I, so if you get, a hundred thousand that's silver play button for those of you who don't know if you get a million subscribers that's the gold button and yeah. that's what dave ramsey's got then you have to get to 10 million 
if you take this YouTube channel, you know, the concept to regular TV, like the mark with a silver play button is like lifetime. <laughs> Dave Ramsey with the gold buttons like HBO. <laughs> that's right. That's right. So we're trying to get there. So anyway, folks, again, we try to keep light. Now let's dive into right. it. Matt, you wrote the book on this, but let me say, what would you think about just saying, let's just go off with a couple myths. Like here's yeah. some myths about the IRA LLC. And yeah. then maybe we could talk about why that makes sense before we yep. get into the how. What do you think? Yeah, love it. Myth number one for me, everyone has to have one. Everyone needs it. Mm. Eh. I mean, guys, we set them up in our law firm and charge for them. I mean, we set up the IRA account at Directed IRA. Like we would tell, if, if we thought that, it would be in our best interest to say that. It's a great tool for many, and maybe even the majority, but it's not, you do not have to have it and it's not required for every type of self-directed deal. Okay, here's my myth number one. You cannot be the manager of your own IRA Ooh. LLC. I hate that one yep. because there's a few custodians nationwide that are like, oh, you can't be a manager. No, you can. It's just their policy that you can't. Correct. And yes. we'll explain some of those rules today, but it is very common to be the manager. Now you can't pay yourself and can't yeah. pay for your cell phone. Yeah, there's some rules there, but you can certainly run the checkbook and take control. Absolutely. Yeah, and we'll go over that. Manager for an LLC is like president of the corporation, right? I mean, it's the person who gets authority that can act for the LLC. So um, I've got another let's one. Give a, let's give oh, a, I got one more. another myth. Okay. You have two myths? I got two myths. Okay, I was just gonna give a basic description so people are like, I don't even know what the hell they're talking about, but okay, you give another <laughs> myth. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> fair enough. Um, why don't you do your basic description? Because I think okay. that's a good point. Yeah, then let's let me let's see. We can hit another myth. Okay, so uh, if you're like, I don't even know what a hell a self directed IRA is, guys, go back to episode one and listen to this <laughs> yeah. in order. Okay, all right, because I don't want to waste anybody's time. <laughs> yeah. All right, so you've got your self directed IRA, and we know you can buy an asset right out of the IRA. You can buy real estate in the IRA. You could do a note. You can invest in a private company. All these cool things. All right, but. Many deals, let's say a rental property or a fix and flip, or you, you know, you need money tomorrow, want to fund a deal and you, you know, whatever. They're like, I want more control of it. I don't have to go to my custodian and say, hey, directed IRA, even though we're great and awesome and we're on the ball, but I don't have to go to you guys and say, hey, I need to send earnest money tomorrow. I just signed a contract on a property and I got to write it in the name of directed trust company, FBO, my IRA, and you guys got to sign on the contract. And and did you get the earnest money sent out? And now I got to close. And can you wire in the money to close? And by the way, can you sign all the closing documents? Because it's all in my IRA's name. And now I own the property. And can you pay the expenses? I got to pay the insurance once a month and make sure the rent's coming in. You know, there's a lot of back and forth with certain assets, like a rental or like a fix and flip that has some transactions. The solution, don't have your IRA own the property. Have your IRA own an LLC 100% that you're the manager of that'll have a bank account. The LLC is gonna own the property. The LLC is gonna be the buyer on the contract, okay? And you're gonna have a bank account for the LLC. The IRA is gonna invest its cash into the LLC. This is XYZ Investments LLC, whatever you wanna call it. You're the manager, now you're in control and can sign the contract, cut the bills, receive income, all in this LLC bank account that's separate from everything else you have, but that's the basics of it. It puts you in a better control position to just manage your investment easier. Now, what I'd like, I'm going to, class, I'm, I'm a list kind of guy. I grew up that way with my mom where here's your list on Saturday. As soon as you're done, you can go screw around. Um, so <laughs> I'm going to put that, that is the reason, one of the reasons why. And it, not only does it describe the IRA LLC, um, but I think that's a, one of the main reasons why you do an IRA LLC is that, so you have more autonomy. That's a yeah. big word, but you have faster, easier control and oftentimes cheaper yeah. access to your IRA LLC. Okay. Now I'm going to give a quick, easy myth. And then I've got the second, what I think reason why IRA LLCs make sense. All right. Um, the second myth is in states like California, where it can be more Ooh. cumbersome or expensive to have an LLC. Um, I don't need an LLC. I can just do some sort of trust or I can try to get around the IRA LLC when it's the best thing to use and do it in a clunky manner. And that's okay. No, it's not. I think it's a myth that you can get around the IRA LLC and use a trust and do the same thing and get asset protection. Nope. 
that's a myth. And Matt, mm -hmm. would you agree? Absolutely. I, I'm, I'm getting tired of that one because I get it, uh, you know, probably once a week at least, someone coming in here telling me, and a lot of them set them up at other custodians and we won't touch them. Yeah. And here's another thing. Let me just say this again. We have more clients in California than our state. We have a law firm office there. Um, if we thought they were legit, it's like shooting fish in a barrel, setting those up in California. Everyone yeah. them, they don't want to pay the 800 bucks to the franchise tax board. We get it. I would set it up all day if we thought it was good. But let me give two reasons why it doesn't work. Because I, I, I'm i going to send people this podcast now, this episode, <laughs> when they say, but why can't I do the trust? So let me give you the technical answer. And I'll be fast. Okay. Okay. Short. But I, I hope just, a can of worms. Man, I got yeah. Matt Sorens on a rampage now. Yeah, I love it when he gets on a uh, rampage. Yeah, this soapbox is going <laughs> to be here for a minute. <laughs> all right. So... An IRA is a trust by law. Like when you set up your IRA, you actually, it's basically a trust. You're the grantor of it, putting money into it. Your IRA custodian's the trustee and you're the beneficiary during your lifetime. And when you die, it goes to the people you lift on, list on your beneficiary designation on your account. It is a trust by law, okay? It's federally chart created by law and you gotta meet the requirements of an IRA, okay? And the trustee of that IRA must be a bank, credit union, or trust company. We're a trust company. We're the trustee of your IRA. When you set up an LLC or, or excuse me, a trust, like these business trusts or whatever the heck you want to call it. Delaware them. statutory trust, yeah. land right. trust. Yeah. Well, who's the beneficiary of that trust? I mean, who's the grantor of it? Well, the IRA is setting it up. Okay. Most states, only individuals can be a grantor and establish a trust. So you're in like California or some other state. I don't know what the hell you did. Is this really a trust? Can I, I'm an individual. I didn't set it up. My IRA did. And then the IRA can't die. So how's this going to pass on? The IRA doesn't die. Right. You die, but you don't own this trust. Your IRA does. And then I have another issue, okay? Like, this is all of the basis yeah. of a trust. Law. And that's why no attorney I know, I mean, there's apparently one or two in California that'll do it. Go to them, get a uh, uh, attorney opinion letter and make sure they got malpractice if you're doing it. <laughs> but the other thing is the trustee under a IRA must be a bank credit union trust company. Well, if you just make yourself the trustee of the trust and your IRA already is a trust, then the IRS can have a problem with that and say, your IRA is a trust. It just put money into another trust that your IRA owns 100% of, and you just make yourself trustee. Didn't you just get around the rule? And doesn't the trustee requirement still apply to this new trust you created? Which, by the way, is probably a bogus trust. doesn't even work because an IRA owns it and became the grantor. So yeah. I got a lot of problems with it. And I just, yeah. I don't like to touch them. That's <laughs> if you yeah, can. And I'll add one last problem. And is and there's probably some other minor ones for sure but and to say what matt just said by making yourself trustee of the trust of which your trust is the grantor of if that even makes sense you probably committed a prohibited transaction to get that word out on the table and we've got podcasts coming up on that so that's what really matt's saying is that if you, you make yourself the trustee you may have just shot yourself in the foot but the last big problem is how do you document this I mean, a self-respecting lawyer, even out of law school, is going to go, okay, I got to draft a trust agreement with all these moving parts and make it operational and then go to the bank with this agreement and go to the IRS and get a tax ID number, and, ugh, but all to get around $800. People, it's a freaking cost of living in California. Do you know where I'm podcasting from right now? California. <laughs> it's great here. It's nice. I get it. But there's a cost to being here. Now, I don't live full-time in California. We come visit a lot. Hence, I don't pay taxes in California. I just am a visitor on occasion. So, but people, okay. So let's get off that soapbox. But yeah. you, out there, when you start looking at these checkbook LLCs and these IRA LLC things, you're going to have people in California that try to talk you out of doing it because of a cost, but I think they cause far, far more problems for you than saving money. Yeah. All okay. I was gonna say, if you're gonna do it, just get a lawyer to do it. Make sure they have an practice get an opinion letter. When we set up an IRA LLC in our law firm, Kate Lister, we give you an opinion letter with it. that said, this is how it was set up. This is the legal basis behind it. Here's some of the cases about it. Make sure you stay within these guidelines. All right, so. Okay, now, Matt, let me say this. Yeah. We've done four, no, we've done three myths. Yeah, we got kind of salty on these myths too. We did, we got People a little like, salty. guys, geez, yeah, chill out. out. We're, we're I'm trying to get a workout in here. I'm driving, man. Yeah, yeah, we love it, okay. So let's just take a breath, everybody. Whew. They're not that complicated. I think that's another myth. And yeah. I'd like to add that to the list. So there's four myths there. 
I wanted to get to a round number. I love in my list round numbers. And then Matt gave the number one reason for a IRA LLC is access and ease. Let me tee up what I think is number two and let Matt talk about it because I've been talking too much. Number two, the reason why I think IRA LLCs are so freaking cool is you can pool multiple accounts or people. That's one of the major reasons. So explain Matt just in general how that works as, as before we dive into the how-to. Yeah, so we call that the multi-member IRA LLC. And essentially what that is, is you can have multiple accounts. This could be your Roth and your traditional. This could be your account, your spouse's account. And you're like, hey, alone, we can't really buy a property or do the deal we want to do by ourselves. But if I throw in my, my IRA for 150 grand and my spouse has an IRA for 150 grand, we can be 50-50 in an LLC that then goes out and buys this $300,000 property we want. Perfect. Okay. But if we didn't combine them together, we couldn't do that. And we, yeah. but this is the deal we want. So it's a perfect opportunity to combine multiple accounts, even if you're prohibited. Remember from the prior podcast, the Selfridge Diary Rules one, which by the way, if you don't know what a privileged transaction is, go back and listen to that one. Yeah. Is we don't want you or your spouse or your IRAs transacting between each other. But when you co invest into an LLC at the same time, you're buying the initial ownership of the LLC at the beginning. There's no transaction, so it's not prohibited. So you take the initial ownership in that example, 50-50. You break up the ownership, always based on the dollars invested. And it could be 70-30 because your IRA put in 70%, your spouse has put in 30, it doesn't matter. And now that LLC goes out and buys the property. So that's called the multi-member IRA LLC. It's a little more complicated. Like in our law firm, we charge 800 bucks if an IRA owns an LLC, 100%. If it's a multi-member where there's multiple IRAs, it takes more work and process. There's more people involved. $1,500 plus state buying fees. And I think, Matt, it's actually $850, or the price will be increased. So if you're listening to this podcast down the road, uh, I think the price would be increasing to $850 soon. We haven't raised prices in almost 10 years. We've been trying to be very, very affordable for the yeah, main- Mark's people. breaking some news to me. Dang. Well, I, th I think that's Did out I miss there. the meetings? I missed the memo. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to plant that seed. Now, if you call up and it's still $800, count yourself lucky. All right. Yeah. Now- now that was number what number one reason was ease and control and access. Number two was so I could pool together. I'm going to give one NAS number three, and then Matt, we're going to go into the how to for a bit. Is that okay? Yeah. So number three. This is probably, and I I got a ting of emotion just thinking of number three because I think number three, um, I gave the most common, but I think this is the coolest. Number three is you leaving a legacy. Now, what I mean by that. Many of our clients that are self-directing, they're a little older. They've had a chance to build up a 401k at work and they've rolled the money out to an IRA or, you know, they've, they've got some means. They build up an IRA worth investing, which typically means if they're a little older, they've got a family, either nieces and nephews or children or grandchildren. And you know what's freaking cool? You can set up an IRA LLC with your kids' Roth IRAs, with your grandkids' covered L IRAs with your spouse's health savings account, with your brother's 401k. I mean, the family can come together and invest together. And it is so exciting. I had two phone calls today, just in my own personal family circle regarding this, because I've got son-in-laws now that have married my daughters and, and they're like, oh my gosh, you know, they've, they married into the Mark Kohler craziness. So they're excited and we're doing some deals together. But I want to teach my kids this concept. And I think it's so fun that you can have a family board meeting and talk about investing in your IRAs. Yeah, really cool. So, yeah. So how I do we do that. it, Matt? Combining funds together. All right. So let's let's walk over how you do it, because let's let's talk about the single member LLC, how you do it. And then okay. the multi member little couple different notes on each single member, single member IRA LLC. This is a brand new LLC. Let me say this first. You're not starting with, oh, I've got this old LLC that I've been. That's right. I've, I just don't have anything in it anymore. I want to use it. And no, you, can't. you can't do that. You, you own can't. it. I got to yep. change the ownership from you personally to your IRA. We just committed a private transaction. Step one, you haven't even done anything. You haven't even invested in anything. Okay. Yeah. So you got to start fresh. Start fresh. Let the IRA own yeah. it from setup. Okay. okay. Now you're going to file articles with the state like a regular. Yeah, hold on, hold on. You're, you're totally yeah. already complicated. All right. <laughs> I want to, I, Matt and I, Matt, I'll be honest with you. And if people get to know Matt and I really intimately, like it works with our firm, 
you'll know our strengths and weaknesses. And I'm going to admit it right here publicly. Matt's smarter than me. I really feel he is. I think I can be more creative than Matt. It's and I like to recognize that. <laughs> yeah. And you're better. I love you, man. And I think I can break things down into their basic steps a little bit better. And so we yeah. complement each other. So let me say this first. I'll, I'll, I'll tee it up for Matt where you just right, wanted to say. You, you give step, step one off. is you've got an IRA account. So you've got an IRA account. Now this could be a 401k. It could be an IRA. It could be an HSA. It could be a Roth. So let's say you've got a self-directed account. You have to get it at a self-directed custodian. So now many of you that are already on our, this level of our podcast or you're listening, you're, you're probably already there, but it's worth saying. You know, some people just listen to a podcast cold because someone told them to do it. So you can't call Merrill Lynch and do an IRA LLC. You're going to have to get your IRA to a self-directed custodian, right. step one. And then step two, you're going to have to engage them to say, I want an IRA LLC. And this is typically a direction letter. You're going to, you're in our website, directed IRA, you'll go to forms and you're going to say, I want to direct you yeah. to invest in this LLC. And they're going to go, okay, that's what you want to do. Yeah. Here's some of the things we're going to need. Is that fair it's to say? That? Direction of investment, IRA LLC is what the form's called. It's easy to find. Yep. And if, and if you're using, let's say our law firm, they're going to do this form for you. You're just signing it. Mm -hmm. Yep. So you've got an IRA and, and you maybe said, Ooh, Ooh, I want that simplicity or I want that access, or I want to pool money together. So I'm going to get started. So if you're going to pool money, you're going to want to make sure all the family members or people that you're going to pool money with have their account at a at directed IRA. You can set up your directed IRA account at night in your underwear. You can just boom, 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 sign everything with DocuSign. In the morning, your account's set up. So that's step one is make sure you've got a quality account and your money's in it. You want to make sure that your money is transferred over to your account and that you've got that, that form ready to go per se, or you know that a law firm's going to do it for you. Then... Step two, you're going to call the law firm and you're going to go, law firm, I need an LLC because you can't go to LegalZoom to do this. LegalZoom, is, all the custodians are not going to allow that. There has to be about 15 provisions in an LLC to allow for Department of Labor, ERISA, IRS. And that's why we give a comfort letter. You don't want to just pull some freaking LLC off the shelf. You will yeah. jack this up. So Matt, and you may want to add some of these basics too. I'm talking too much, but you see where I want to yeah. go? I want to just yeah. get some of these basics out. Yeah, and let me say this, even just a few process things. How you get the EIN for the LLC is a little different when it's an IRA than an individual. How you file the articles, there are different options between manager, manager, and member, manage. You got to do different with an IRA LLC. They probably don't care about it individually as much. Yeah. And so there's just some process things that'll, if you miss it, it's going to get the IRA LLC rejected. I just did a webinar this morning to Wealth Council, which is a large group of attorneys in the estate planning and business space on self-directed IRAs. And we talked about IRA LLCs. Like we're out there teaching it. You don't have to use us. We're good. We got, we got it down, but and just cheap. use someone. Yeah. And we're a good fee, but just make sure you're not finding some doc online. I'm not saying that because we want to make money. Like I'm saying, use someone else who knows what the hell they're doing. But I'm just saying what happens is then you get the, your, your LLC rejected either here or somewhere else. They're not going to fund it. We don't want it in our files. We don't want our examiners and regulators looking at it being like, this was a piece of crap. Why did you do this? So we want it to be right. And, and, and then clients get mad because they're like, I did it wrong, but I didn't know. And I got to close tomorrow or I'm in a hurry. Everyone's always in a hurry and there's not enough time to fix it. And so, so I just, just yeah. keep that in mind. And see, you can see when Matt said, you're going to file articles with the state. I think there's like six or th you know five or six things to say before that, because yeah. If you go to directed IRA and say, okay, I want to direct you to and move my IRA money into this LLC. Directed IRA is going to say, send us the LLC. Now, directed IRA knows if it comes from KKOS lawyers, done. We yeah. know we, we've already verified the attorneys at directed IRA have approved that form. Now, if you go to LegalZoom and set up an LLC, whether you go to directed IRA or somewhere else, they're going to reject it. That's what Matt says, reject it. It's not the IRS that's rejecting it. It's not the state that's rejecting it. It's the custodian that's going to put the money in your LLC. They got to make sure you're not going to put it in some nefarious LLC that's got prohibited transactions because it's not in their best interest for you to create a prohibited transaction either Yeah. because the IRS are all in their 
business. Yeah, and this basically there's just legal requirements that have to be in the document. And every every IRA custodian that allows IRA LLCs have them. I've trained many of them. That they, that it's in, I have a checklist in my book, in the IRA LLC chapter, in my book, the self regulatory Army Handbook. There's a checklist on what needs to be in the documents if you want to get into the nitty gritty yourself. Okay, so what's the next step, Mark? Well, we like we got the documents. Yeah. Um, let me go I like that. How it works. How's the money get in there? Yeah, I like that because. And, and thanks everybody for letting us just kind of ponder this because our attorneys, we have five attorneys and we're doing consults every day around the country. When Matt said we have a lot of clients in California, we have more clients around the country than in any one state. So right. don't feel like you have to, um, uh, again, try to figure this out on your own. I think also when you ask your custodian to prepare the LLC, I think you're asking for trouble. Because they're not, they're not law firm and they're not going to give you a comfort letter. What they're trying to do is double dip. They're trying to make money on your account and on setting up the LLC. But how can they be setting up your account and also playing lawyer? Because if you jack it up, you know what they're going to say? We're not your lawyer. And you're like, well, holy, you set up my docs. So I think, it, again, at this basic level, you've got your account set up. Now you've got to go forum shop. You're going to say, I need a lawyer to draft this. Yeah. Um, and, and we get that call and that question all the time. So when you meet with a lawyer, I think before you even file articles, you're going to decide what state am I going to set this up in? Yeah. Yeah. What, now, what's the uh, advice you give on that, Matt? Yeah. I was just going to joke. Today's episode is brought to you by Directed IRA and KQS Lawyers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, sponsors of today's episode. I just, it is. Uh, it is. It's we're, not... we're a little preachy today, more than more than usual. But yeah. Um, okay, let's hit the state. What state to set it up in? Okay. We generally like to set up in the state where you're going to buy real estate. That's your doing. first choice. That's your first choice. Second choice is maybe you're doing cryptocurrency. An IRA LLC is great for crypto. You link your crypto wallet to it. Um, I have a good, some videos on that, a chapter in my, the second edition of my book on it. Um, we'll probably set up in the state where you live. Now you're going to be like, again, the Californians, well, but I'm in California, it's 800 bucks. I'm sorry. There's really no legit way around that until you move your butt out of California. So or if your manager now, let, let's say, let's stay on the state thing for a minute. And, and Matt said it quickly. So I want to reiterate this. So you're, you want to take your IRA and get an LLC so that you can go buy rentals, buy and flip rentals. We're going to say, on our first question the attorneys are going to ask you is, where are you going to buy your rental? And you may say, I don't know. Well, if you live in Nebraska, but your rentals are probably going to be in Tennessee, we want you to have a pretty good feel for where you're going to buy your rentals. And if you say, I haven't decided yet, we may start the process, get all your information, get it ready to go, which doesn't hurt. So again, that's, that's yeah. water that it's things, there's things that can be done. But if you haven't really decided where you're buying your rentals anyway, that's kind of a big deal. And we've got education resources to help you out. You can jack up your IRA quickly too. And the, by not, by just shooting from the hip, oh, I'm buying turnkey rentals here, here, that. No, get engaged, realize where you're going to invest. I think that's a really good thing to decide on because um, we don't want to set up an LLC in Nebraska. And then on day two, you start buying rentals in Tennessee. Now we've got to register at foreign in Tennessee. Not that that's hard, but it's going to run you two to 400 bucks. And we're like, we could have saved that. Yeah. Yep. And it's okay. Like, you know, just be ready, hit us up right when you know where you're going to go. You know, yep. we can jump on the LLC, but don't hit us up when you're like, all right, I'm closing next week. What? We don't, yeah. I can't, I don't got time. And in certain states, you're not going to get it done in time, even yeah. if we expedite and we bust over here. So make sure you're giving yourself some time. I generally like to say, give yourself two to three weeks. Ooh, I like that. Um, so that you have enough lead time to get it set up. Um, and if you're in a hurry and this happens too, and you're like, but I need the LLC. I want to get the contract in the name of the LLC, but I got to get an offer in today. Pick a really unique name. Don't pick ABC Investments LLC. Okay. Pick maybe Kohler ABC Investments LLC or something oh really Matt, unique. I love this. And see, we're talking about, this is this stuff, even before you've created the LLC that's insane. Where, timing, naming. So Matt, before you go to name, I that was on my list too. I, I like what Matt just said about timing. 
because a lot of people think, oh, I've got Robert Shapiro on the TV setting up LLCs in the middle of the night. They, we think, we, the public thinks the LLCs are faster than they really are. And when you've got IRAs involved, it's even longer because the IRA money has got to go through the custodian to get to a new bank account for your LLC. So there's an extra step people aren't used to as well. And so I think deciding where you're going to invest and getting that consultation with the lawyer out of the way as soon as possible and, and then giving yourself two to three weeks before you've committed to a transaction. Because if you're like, we get people all the time, I got closing in four days. We're like, and you just thought to call us now? Yeah. <laughs> so timing yeah. is so important. Um, okay, let's hit, go ahead. You ready on If you're watching YouTube, I'm biting my knuckles because <laughs> poor Matt is being so patient with me. Okay, I'm like, one more thing. Matt mentioned California. Here is the way you can get around California $800 totally legitimately. Most of our Californians, by the way, are not investing in California. They right. live in California. They've got the bank to live there. They love it. They love the lifestyle. They're ingrained in it with their community and their family. They're stuck. I get it. But they're investing outside of California. So here's the way that literally the statutes and the Supreme Court of California has allowed you to get over this rule is if you're going to do a multi-member LLC with your family, let your daughter, let your son who doesn't live in California be the manager. Once you're not the manager of the LLC and you're not investing in California, they can't charge you $800. Yeah. So that's, so whenever we do a multi-member IRA LLC and I, the primary clients in California, I'll say, Who's all our members here? Well, I got this IRA and this IRA. No, 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 no. Who are the owners of those IRAs? Well, Bob, my buddy, his IRA is, he lives in Arizona. He's going to be the manager. Now you can still control through the yeah. document of the LLC that your Bob, your buddy Bob's not going to rip you off because he's got to follow what the members say. Yeah. But, but th I think that's a good point too, Matt. Don't you? I mean. Yeah. yeah. I mean, the only thing too with me on that is a lot of times people put in those things to save 800 bucks and it's more of a pain in the butt. It like, they're like, well, now I gotta go track down my daughter cause she doesn't know what the hell she's doing. And I'm, mm -hmm. you know, or I, this friend of mine, I'd really rather have the control. I don't like him actually having the control even though we're willing to be partners. I wish I was just on here so I could just do the things I want to do. And True. so sometimes there's baggage with that. So think that through though, certainly an option in the right situation, it can totally be a, a good workaround. Okay, naming, okay. Do you put Sorensen on all your LLCs? Definitely not. <laughs> ah, see, okay. I like I do it. Have, I do have an MNS because my initials are MNS. Yeah. But uh, I got an MNS real estate. Yeah. So let me say this. I use an IRA LLC, okay? Mark uses an IRA LLC, okay? Mine has a 401k attached to it. Mark's has an HSA. Um, so we use this structure ourselves. Like I'm sitting in the company here where I can approve everything if I wanted easier even for me to use an LLC. Okay. Yeah, so like if that helps you understand that the, just the ease of it. So, okay. Naming it. Okay. Now this is where you, you don't even know people like, was it Thursday of last week? I text Matt. No, no, no. It was on Saturday. I was teaching a workshop. Literally people were watching me on the zoom and I called Matt because Matt is the guru. He I am so grateful to know him. And I, I'm blowing smoke up his skirt. I get it. But he really <laughs> does know this law. And so I call him. But when it comes to privacy, I've written a chapter on that in my book. I geek out on JJ Luna. I love watching Jack Reacher and you know all this. Now, by the way, I'm not a prepper people and I'm not a conspiracy theorist. I do have a real address out there. And my wife orders so much on Amazon. You can find out pretty much where I'm at at any moment on you know, a satellite somewhere. But I will, but I do study privacy. I have dreams of being more private in my life. Um, my wife just won't let me be more private. But I, I love privacy. So the you can one always find it at markjcolor.com though. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> here, here's where privacy is important to know the difference. If you're going to market yourself, if you're going to market your company, you don't want to be private about that. Mark J. Kohler Inc. It's out there. Social media. I'm out there but my assets are private. See the difference? So when I, when I wanna create privacy from possible predators, from a possible lawsuit, from 
identity theft, who knows? I'm going to make my assets private, but not my operational business private. In fact, they're completely opposite. So I consider IRA, IRAs and my 401k money very private. Sure. So I want to choose a name for the LLC that's very innocuous, anonymous, uh, yeah. indescriptive, you know, all those good adjectives. So, yeah. And so, do you like the word IRA in it, Matt? You don't either. Never. I never do. I mean, it confuses people. Like it confuses the bank. Mm -hmm. What you're going to do later is you're going to set up a bank account in the LLC's name. You're just getting a regular LLC business checking account. And you're going to need the articles that are approved with the state and the EIN. And as the IRA custodian, we're going to put the money into that LLC. Okay. We're going to send a check or a wire into that account. So, uh, all right. So we got the name down. You're going to get a good name yeah. for privacy purposes. And I just want to say, if you're in a hurry in particular, don't pick a really generic name that someone could be using because it might get rejected. We're going to search it before we file, but best in those instances to pick a unique name that it's really unlikely someone's going to have. Yeah. And a couple of thoughts, this, you don't need a DBA. And again, you're not going to need a trademark. Trademark conversation is again for your operational business. So this IRA LLC will have a very innocuous, unique name like yeah. Green, Green Tree Holdings, whatever. Yeah. Um, I and, have one other comment too. Go ahead. Okay. And, and, and I don't, and I want to be clear when I say IRA, we bump into people all the time that named their, uh, their LLC, uh, Brian Jones, uh, IRA LLC. I'm like, are you kidding me? Your name's in it. And it's an IRA. Don't put your name in it. Don't put the word IRA in it. Just call it something innocuous that no one can ever figure out what's in it. Yeah. Yeah. I did have one client when I told him that pushed back on me because he buys properties at auction and the, everyone knows his name. And the auctioneers, because he's got to write cashier's checks off of it and stuff and, and his his checks, it was easier for him to just throw his name on it for the auction processes and getting certified funds and his checks cleared because he had really fast deadlines anyways. But um, here's one other thing on the name. Don't pick a long name. If this is going to be a rental property, some tenant's mm -hmm. going to write a check to that dang thing. And if you got like a four word LLC name, it ain't going to fit on a check, you know? <laughs> and I get people that come up with, I love that I can say this on a podcast because I can't say it in a consultation, but I have clients that choose the weirdest names that I couldn't even spell. I mean, I'm going to be in the national spelling bee and a nine-year-old couldn't spell it. Yeah. You know, origin, please. Insaneville. Yeah, the name uh, <laughs> I had, I've had some funny ones. I had um, this one, they, they did a prestige worldwide, which is the, in the movie Step Brothers, that's the name of, Will Farrell and John C. Riley's uh, company that they set up, okay. uh, Prestige Worldwide. It's hilarious. Okay. They now, actually got, got it a, approved in their state. I was like, cool. They got it? Yes. I, I, I'm waiting someday to open Vandalay Industries for sure. Yeah. Um, yeah. For you Seinfeld fans or the Bluth Company. That'd be sweet. Yeah, the Bluth Company. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now, all right. Let's see. Let's see where we're at here, everybody. This is really important. And I, some of you may think, you gosh, you guys are being so basic, but there's little golden nuggets in all this because even the most savvy investor that set up 50 LLCs, when it comes to an IRA LLC, it's a whole new world. And I have clients that call me that are worth millions that have done this over and over again in their own life. But when it's an IRA, there's little unique things. So I appreciate everybody's patience yeah. as we try to go through this. Um, let me hit a couple other points, if I may. Sure, sure, yeah. Okay, and then we're going to file our articles. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, yeah. yeah. Okay. All right, so remember who owns this thing? You don't, okay? Mm. The IRA owns it, okay? And so you yeah. need the account first. In this process, you're gonna need to have the IRA account set up first. You don't need to have the money transferred over yet. Just get the account set up. You can get the LLC documents going at the same time, Fidelity or TD Ameritrade or wherever your current IRA dollars are, are getting transferred over, all right? Yep. So th those two things can be done concurrently getting the LLC going and the transfer. But step one is get the IRA account set up. Okay. So we went through, you've got your IRA account set up. All the IRAs are accounts you're going to use. You've thought of what state you might work. You've set up a consult with your law firm that you're comfortable with. Um, we agree. We highly encourage you to not overpay for this. Um, we told you our fees. We've seen clients pay four or five times that, and it's just a highway robbery. So Get a second opinion if the price seems a little outrageous. If your attorney has never done this before, it doesn't mean they're a bad attorney. We're all good at different things. Just, But you may not use your regular attorney or accountant for this consultation. Um, that's okay. 
So get your consult going. You're going to get the pick, figure out a name. Um, you're going to think about your timing so that you don't put yourself up against a wall. And then, okay, I think we're ready. The uh, law firm is going to file for the LLC. And let's, before we even get to operating agreement and ownership percentages, because that can be unique, let's just talk SS4. That's your EIN. This is where typical attorneys or accounts can screw this up again, because they're like, they, they, they overthink it. You see, when you fill out an SS4 to get an EIN, there's a box, LLC. Well, in the real world, you go, LLC. But when an IRA owns it, a practitioner that doesn't do this every day, they freak out. Is it a trust? Is it an IRA or whatever? And then they screw up the SS4. So this is so you want to make sure that you do check the box. It's an LLC. Get an EIN. And when you go to the bank for crying out loud, you're not going to need the operating agreement. You're just going to need your articles and your EIN acceptance letter and what your EIN number is. Do not tell the bank it's an IRA. The banker's brain will explode. They're going to call the personal banker over. They're going to get, you know, they're going to call the red phone for the president of B of A in Chicago that there's some Yahoo here. You know, it's just like, rip, rip. it's almost like security shuts the building down because you're trying to open an account in the name of the IRA. Keep the bank on a need to know basis. The 18 year old setting up your account does not need to know what you're doing. Yeah, it's an LLC bank account. Now there are some smaller banks if you're like, you know what, I'd rather work with a smaller bank that knows what the hell an IRA LLC is, there are smaller banks that do it. And they know it, they market for it, they love those accounts, they'll hold your hand, they're good in all 50 states, but you know, they're not the nation nationwide bank that you're probably at right now. Now, the, the national bank, let me just say the reason why they don't do this is because they don't have to. Wells Fargo is limited on how big they can even grow, right? And the other banks are like, we don't, it's like you're a square peg, they're a round hole. Put an IRA LLC in it, it's just, doesn't fit the boxes and they're not going to train 20,000 bankers, business, small business bankers on how to set these up. So, um, so there's resources for like, you know what guys, I really didn't have a good experience at my bank, or I want to work with one that knows what the heck an IRA LLC is. We got the contacts. Let us, we'll, we'll get you in the right direction. Now, and, and just to give you a common problem so that you don't pull your hair out, like why didn't Matt and Mark talk about this? When you go to the bank and say, you don't say the word IRA, Got LLC this. business checking account. I need to set up an LLC business checking account. Here's my tax ID. Here's my articles. And they're going to say, are you the manager? And you're going to go, I'm the manager. Yep. Here's where a problem can occur. You, going back to my example, you live in Oklahoma, but you're setting up a Tennessee LLC. With these national banks, well, even regional or certain credit unions, they're going to go, well, hold it. We're here in Oklahoma. Mm -hmm. You're trying to set up a Tennessee bank account you need to register in Oklahoma. And you're like, no, I don't. I'm doing business in Tennessee. And so you can hit a wall there. Don't let them tell you that you're wrong or that we're wrong. It's the bank. Remember, bankers are from you know, Pluto. Men are from Mars. Women are from Venus. They, they have no concept of how to do business. So don't let them freak you out. We have clients call us up and go, you were wrong. No, you went to B of A. You're really going to trust B of A over us, right? Yeah. And so they're like, no, you're right. And it's just there. So if you're in a situation at the bank where they're trying to force you to register in your state, sometimes you have to get on the phone and call a branch in the state where you're going to set up your bank account. Um, if you're ever going to go visit the, you, you, the property or go walk through or do a little bit of head hunting for your property, go, that's a great time to go set up the bank account when you're on the road. But if you just know you need a national bank account so you don't have to deal with this, call the office. That's what Matt's saying. We right. got a we got an online banking system done. Yeah. Done. Yeah, it's we have so places easy. to send you. So yeah. okay. Um, one other thing. When you set up the bank account, here's a question they'll ask. Well, we need you to put a minimum deposit of fifty dollars in it. Mm. Okay, don't get suckered in. All right. Mm -hmm. If you're gonna use a bank like that, wait till you get the check. We are gonna cut a check to the LLC. Because one of the things when you say, when you want to set it up, you're going to say, how much do I want to put in the LLC? Yes. Now, remember, you got to leave 500 bucks in your IRA. That's our minimum requirement. Most other custodians have that or a similar number to say you have at least have $500 cash in your IRA. All the rest of it can go into the LLC. So just keep that in mind on how you're calculating this. The rest can go in the LLC. And if it's going to be a check cut and they don't want to open it without a deposit, fine. Walk that check in, deposit when you open up the account. If you have a good relationship with the bank, and lots of clients do, they're like, I'm a business owner. I've, I've worked with the bank for years. They know me. Just call them up. 
get the account open and say, there's going to be a wire coming in guys for 150 grand. Can you chill out? I'm buying some real estate. You know, there's gonna be a wire in the next few days, open the account for me, get me an account number so I can get a wire in. You know, and I think this is a good point in the show too, because we're, we're almost done here and, and we could talk about that. Well, in fact, two points. One, when you have that consult with the lawyer, they're going to answer these questions and more and tailor it to your situation. Yeah. We're trying to give you the general procedure, the general myths, the general whys. And if some of you are like, well, what about this? Write it on a yellow pad. And that's the purpose of the consult. That's the beauty of this. When Matt says our law firm and wherever you go, you want to make sure you get this from the law firm you work with. They should give you a comfort letter that says, here's how you do it. And if it's, if you don't follow these rules, it's on you. But if you follow our rules, we'll stand behind you. That means if the IRS comes knocking and you did what KQS lawyers told you to do, we'll take the heat. That's the purpose of comfort letter. So all these little questions, write them down and the lawyers will go through it. Number two, Matt's book has a whole chapter on this. Get his book right now. Just go to, go to amazon.com and type in directed, uh, self-directed IRA handbook. And, SDIRA handbook. .com. Yeah. And if you want to go buy the book directly from Matt's site, you can go to SDIRA handbook.com. And that's great. Third, the reason why I say we could talk about this for hours, we have a summit. We did a summit for two days answering questions about self directing. If you're going to self direct, you've got to go watch the summit. The recording is so for, is it, how much is the recording, Matt? I think it's 199 right now. It yeah. Used to be cheaper, but. And when you go, yeah, and when you go to sdirahandbook.com, you can buy the summit and sit down and watch it. And there's a whole section on this too. You want to absorb this. You're the captain of your ship. In fact, our lawyers are going to tell you, you got to bone up on this a little bit. You just can't say, oh, I'm just going to set up an IRA LLC and walk out the door. Yeah. Yeah, you gotta learn. Responsibly. Absolutely. Because you kind of got the gun. You know, this is the, we hate that analogy, but like you're driving this thing now, okay? Yeah. You're in control and you can also wreck it. So I'm, I moved from a gun to a car there in my analogy. I like that. <laughs> this is the uh, hand. Yeah. So let me hit a couple other points because I think these, these are really important. Oh, we yeah. We're, we got more to say. Okay. Yeah. I'm just All saying, right. if I, I just wanted to say, Matt, to everybody, don't think that this podcast is the end of this discussion. If you're going to okay. do this, read Matt's chapter, get the summit for 200 bucks. And okay. number three, what was number three? The summit, the book. Oh, and your consultation. Make yeah. sure you go into that consultation with the list and have your whole family on the call. We're cool with that. We've had phone calls with 15 family members where everybody's got their IRA at the table and, and everybody's asking questions. We love that. That's great. Yeah. Okay. All That's right. On your list. Okay. All right. Let's go over the most common structure. The IRA LLC, your IRA owns the LLC 100%. Okay. Okay. That LLC is single member. That means there's no tax return required by the IRS. And once that LLC is set up, you're gonna to need to renew it with the state that you're in. And most states have a $50 annual fee or so, or somewhere around there. Some are 10 or 20, some are 100. Yeah, California's of course 800. So, but there's no federal tax return for the LLC when the when one IRA owns it 100%. Now, two points though on the multi-member, because we talked about the benefits of partnering in multiple IRAs, family members, friends, whatever. Everybody's coming into the LLC and now we've combined all these dollars to go do a cool deal. A couple of things you got to know on that. One, we are always going to set the ownership in that multi-member LLC based on the dollars invested. Okay. And I mentioned that earlier, but we're always going to break up the ownership based on dollars invested. Everyone's coming in at the time of formation. The second thing to know on it, and this is a drawback. There's a partnership tax return in a multi-member LLC. If you've got more than one owner, it's not single member anymore. The partnership, the IRS wants a partnership tax return, even if it's your IRA and your spouse's IRA. Now there's no tax due on a partnership return, but there is a tax return that'll have to be filed, the 1065 partnership return. So it's a it's kind of an administrative thing you're gonna have to do every year. Okay. Um next. I think it's important. We've got our prohibited transaction podcast or several of them, and I'm sure we'll shoot more and more. And by the way, we do an open forum where we answer questions. You want to, again, subscribe to this podcast if this is your first 
experience with us so that you're, you're getting those open forums too. Yeah. It's always interesting to hear what other questions people have around the country. Um, but, Let's talk about manager. We do. I want to hit that one next. That, the that's way. what I'm, that, Matt, that's right where I was going. So I was going to say why I said prohibited transactions is we said you can be the manager but let's maybe talk about what I'm going to just give a couple of things that the manager can and can't do. Yep. And then Matt, the guru here will wrap up the loose ends. First, yes, you can be the manager. Yes, you can sign the checks. Yes, you could fly to Tennessee and go look at the properties you're going to buy. In fact, we highly encourage you to do so. But the LLC is not going to pay for your plane ticket. It's not going to compensate you for going. It's not going to pay for the rental car. You are just going as an investor, as if you were buying stock in Microsoft and you said, I'm going to go to Seattle and look at the Microsoft campus. Fine. Is Microsoft going to pay for your trip? Nope. So if you want to go look at your investment with your IRA LLC, I think that's wonderful. But it's not going to be a tax write-off inside the IRA LLC. We can talk about other methods to maybe get a write-off for that because it's part of your other business maybe. But your IRA LLC cannot pay you to do it. It can't pay you to be the manager and it can't pay for your expenses. But you can certainly make decisions, control the checkbook, and and be in control. That's why yeah. it's self-directed. You're in control. Yep. Yep. I, what would you say that I missed that you can or can't do? Yeah, so um, I always kind of describe it as you can do an administrative and investment oversight tasks. Mm. So the paperwork, the decision-making, the signing of checks or contracts, that's all cool. It's once you cross the line of physical work or paying yourself that we run into it. So the fix and flip that you want to put on the, the tool belt, you know, and swing the hammer, we're going to have a problem with that. If you're like, I'm just going to show up and supervise things. Okay. We're okay with that. You're, that's administrative and management oversight. So um, you want to stay in that lane. And when we do the IRLC, we have a do's and don'ts guide actually that walks through these things. It says, make sure you're doing this and make sure you're not doing that. Okay. Um, no I like this on this do's and don'ts. This is a good transition. And by the way, I told Matt at the beginning of the show before we went live that I wanted to share some of our favorite examples of IRA LLCs. And we, we're going to have many, many podcasts over the years where we talk about mega IRAs and creative ways to get crazy rates of return. But look for that's going to be the climax of the show is we're going to share some of our favorite. I got a couple new ones I'm doing too. But when we talk about tasks, remember, this is an LLC, it is an investment, and someone's got to do freaking bookkeeping. Do yeah. not think that you can just throw caution to the wind. So you either have, you can do the bookkeeping, like we said, that's administrative. But once you open this bank account and you start investing, set up a QuickBooks a, a company for it. Hire an account to do the books. Get your kid to do the books. You can do the books, but you can't pay your kid to do the books. So again, anybody that's involved in the LLC can certainly, you could rotate that. We've seen clients say, first year, you're in charge of the bookkeeping. Next year, you're in charge of the bookkeeping. So everybody takes a turn. That's fine. They just can't be compensated to do it. And when Matt talked about company renewals with the state, that's called company maintenance. If your company gets dissolved because you threw caution to the wind there, that could cause major problems or ripples effects with the IRS. So we have a company maintenance program at our, our law firm, 150 bucks a year. The ladies will make sure your fees paid every year, your minutes are done. And that's right. You want to do your minutes. You want to maintain a little book here so that if there is a lawsuit, which I want to come to as well. So company maintenance and bookkeeping have to be done in an IRA LLC, just like you would in a regular LLC. Like it. Okay. Let's talk about um, you oh, want Matt, to do, do the pro rata, do the pro rata and the ownership thing. You were going yeah. down that path for a minute. Let's talk about getting more money in. Let's say you've set it up and you funded it. All right. And let's say you did the single member LLC, which okay. again is the most common. Your IRA owns at hundred percent. Okay. I just want to make sure everybody gets that. Cause you yeah. keep talking about the big, everybody else, all these people involved. Most common is it's just you and your IRA owns at hundred percent. If you want to put more money in that LLC, easy. It's not a private transaction. You can put more money in. There's a revenue ruling on it. It's in my book that basically says it's not a private transaction when the same IRA is putting in money, the same LLC, 100%. Okay. And there's a little pushback some custodians had over the last 10 years. All of them have kind of gotten around to it. Um, but I just wanted to note that if you get a little pushback. All right. Oh. Now, let's say you're the multi member though and you want to get more money in. And let's say you had three people's IRAs in there. You each owned, let's say it went 30% first, 
30% second and 40% on the third owner. Okay. Yeah, that's hundred <laughs> percent. I was like, oh my gosh. should I do the math there? All right. You did. Uh, yeah, all right. It's yep. Okay. It's, it's getting late on a Friday here. I'm, yep. I'm running out of uh, battery. Um, all right. Let's say you want to get another 10 grand in there. Well, what's going to have to happen is IRA one is going to put in three. IRA two is going to put in three. IRA three is going to put in four. And if you're like, well, IRA three doesn't have any more, any money. They've maxed out their contributions. They can't put any more money in. They have zero money to transfer over from another IRA. What do we do? You're stuck. If that's disqualified people, if that's like you, your spouse and your daughter, let's say IRAs, you can't do it. That's a downside on this multi-member with disqualified family is you have to go pro rata as you put more money in. So if the company, the LLC needs more money, everybody's got to put in based on their ownership percentage. Now, let's say it was an LLC between me and a friend and my IRA owned 50%, his IRA owned 50%. We're just friends. We're not disqualified. We're not family. And it needs 10 grand. And let's say he can't do it, but I'm like, cool, I'll throw the 10 grand in the cupboard. No big deal. We're not disqualified. Doesn't matter. Even if ownership changes and goes up a little bit for me, it's only going at his expense. But if I was putting money into the LLC for my IRA, my daughter's IRA owned 40% and she couldn't put money in. Well, now if I put that money in to cover hers, the ownership needs to adjust a little bit. And if it doesn't, my IRA is doing something to benefit her IRA, which is disqualified. So it causes this prohibited transaction. Yeah. And now Matt is dipped just open the crack of the door to this partnership law that's very unique in that whenever you have two regular Joe Schmoes off the street and, or Sally Joe's off the street, whatever, and they form an LLC that, um, let's not leave the Sally Joe's out of here. Yeah. Like, yeah. No, we, you know, and we have more female listeners than male listeners. Um, mm -hmm. I want to take credit for that. Um, yeah, rather that's, than, uh, that's yeah. a credit to your fabulous tan and yeah. Yeah, that's right. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> <laughs> Matt and I are, these are very self-deprecating humor ladies um, that we're joking about here. But okay, so if you just have two regular people off the street that form an LLC and someone's got to put more money in and someone doesn't have them extra cash, you can do all sorts of horse trading. You can create notes. You can say, ah, ownership doesn't change. We'll figure it out later. You can do special allocations, all sorts of things, but not when IRA is involved. You have to make adjustments because it needs to be fair. The IRS doesn't want any funny business going on. So, so when Matt said, hey, if I got a partner over here that's not family, not prohibited, and my IRA has to put more money in, well, then it's only fair that my IRA ownership goes up a little bit. Or we book a loan that he, I put, loaned him money to put in his share and he owns, owes me and profit's going to have to be distributed in a unique way in the future. You can do all that if they're non-prohibited parties, yep. but if it's family and you need 10 grand, whatever your ownership percentage is, you've got to put that percentage of 10 grand in. Yeah. When we say family, I mean the disqualified family, like yeah. parents, kids, spouses, your brother and sister are totally cool. If it was an LLC, I yeah. LLC with your brother or sister, no big deal. Yep. Now let me back up to and say this so that you see where we came from. When you get on the phone with the attorney and you go, yep, it's just my own IRA, forming an LLC, I want checkbook control, it's gonna be in Tennessee, we're off to the races. Okay, cool, easy schmeasy. They're gonna go answer all your questions, talk about maintenance, da, da, da. But if you say, yeah, but I'm gonna bring in three other IRAs and a 401k and an HSA and a Coverdell and my grandkids Roth or whatever, we're gonna do multi-member. They're gonna say, okay, I need to know exactly how much money each person's going to put in or whoa, see, I already screwed up my own rule. I need to know exactly how much retirement account each, how much money each retirement account's going to put in. See, the vernacular is very important. So they're going to ask how much money is each retirement account going to put in? Yeah. Where is the custodian that each of these accounts are located? Hopefully at the same place. Third, what is the account number for these accounts? And then our paralegals are trained to create a little spreadsheet and go, okay, 100%, we're going to put in $82,000. Well, then that's that's 100%. That's the denominator. Now, your per money you put in is going to create a percentage of that. And so we're going to figure out everybody's ownership down to 0.002 or whatever it is. So that's called pro rata. If you've never had to deal with that. So expect it, it's coming. Let me say one other thing on the multi-member. 
you can mix in individuals too. We've given a lot of examples Ooh, yeah. of IRAs in it, but you can mix in individuals. So this could be my IRA and Mark personally. This mm -hmm. could be my IRA, my dad's IRA, and some of my personal funds. All right. You can have the multi-member IRA LLC that has individuals in there with cash. Yeah. All right. Even if it's disqualified. And again, we break up the ownership based on dollars invested. Yep. And why would we do that? In fact, let's throw out a unique one. And, and we're going to wrap this up. We always try to keep our podcast to an hour. So uh, the, Matt and I have the gift of gab. We could keep talking. We get billed. We pay, you know, we bill by the hour. So yeah, we we'll just, hours. Hey, all right. We're trained. We're trained that way. Yeah. Let's say here's a, here's a fun type of IRA LLC. Then we'll maybe get into some examples and encourage you again, all of you to watch the summit, read the chapter on the book and schedule your consult. Okay. Four partners, a 401k puts in 25%. A Roth IRA puts in 25%. John comes in and says, I'll do on the, all the work on this rehab. I don't have any money. My credit sucks, but I'll, I'll do all the work. And we'll, I'll John do do, John's not family to the IRA and 401k. That's right. He's just unrelated contractor knows his stuff. I'll do, I'll do all the work for 25%. Okay. And then Mary last partner says, I don't have an IRA LLC and I don't want to do the construction, but I've got 25 grand. Let's do it. So she puts in her own money. John puts in his labor and that could even be credit in another example they'll sign on the loans or something. And then 401k puts in 25 grand and IRA puts in 25 grand. Now notice that anybody putting in money got the same ownership percentage per dollar. Yeah. But you arbitrarily said, John got 25% for doing the work. If you change John's percentage, that's okay. But it retro, but then it has a ripple effect of making sure that everybody's par value of the money they put in is the same equivalent ownership percentage yeah. per share. Anyway, did I say that right? Sound good? Yeah, I, I, yeah, I got it. I got you. Okay. Um, I don't know if you said it right, but it sounded great. Thank you. Um, it sounded very smart. <laughs> yes. Um, um, okay. I have one more point and then example. So Matt, maybe you have a wrap up point and then we could do a couple of examples. Okay. The only thing I was going to know is the LLC also has some asset protection to it. What was my point? Oh, okay. That was that. We're on the same page. Okay. Right. You share your idea. Okay. All right. So there's some asset protection to it. So we got the convenience and autonomy you got. You're in control. You got the checkbook. You're running the deal. You can do something today, signing the contracts. Everything's in the LLC's name. You're in the driver's seat. We got the partnering aspect of it. We can partner multiple people or IRAs, even a work partner, as we just talked about, into the LLC. The third benefit is some asset protection for the same dang reason. You use an IRA, or excuse me, use an LLC when you buy a rental property in your personal name. If something happens on the property, you don't want to get sued personally. You don't want your IRA to get sued. They're going to sue the LLC, and they can only get it what the LLC has. They can't come after you, the one responsible for directing the IRA, nor can they come after the IRA itself. All right, so provide some liability protection for your IRA. Yeah, and I want to take it, say this in a different way too. This is where this California land trust, Delaware statutory trust crap causes a problem too, because you're directing this trust, but what are you? You're the trustee and a trust doesn't give asset protection inherently like an LLC. And so you've got all these clunky things going on. And then when you self-direct your IRA to buy rentals without an LLC, is the custodian in trouble if you didn't go fix the railing in the back because of termites? No, the custodian just did whatever you said. And so if I'm a lawyer representing the tenant that fell off the balcony and broke my neck, I'm going to sue the person that self-directed that IRA. Now, if you have an LLC, ugh, I can only get at what the LLC owns. I can't go after the manager personally. Now, this is where people get jacked up. They'll say, well, my IRA has asset protection anyway. Mm. It does. So if I'm in a, a lawsuit, now this is very interesting people. If I'm in, if I am driving down the road, texting and driving and I kill someone, heaven forbid, but it's happening every day now. This is involuntary manslaughter. I talked to a prosecutor the other day out of, um, oh, where were they? I talked to a prosecutor, it was an old lawyer, uh, law school friend. And they said, they actually went for voluntary manslaughter, like drunk driving. It was brutal. Um, so uh, 
anyway, if you're texting into driving and kill someone, they cannot touch what your IRA owns because that's asset protected. That's OJ Simpson. When OJ Simpson got in trouble for the Nicole Brown Simpson thing, they couldn't touch his 401k. Same concept. But we're talking about your IRA doing business now. It's not you texting and driving. It's your IRA owning a rental. Now you're on the hook if you're a slum landlord. Just because it's an IRA doesn't give you carte blanche to be an idiot. So now that's where the LLC comes in and you get that asset protection of being the manager. So that's the difference. Don't yeah. let someone talk you out of an LLC because, oh, you got asset protection anyway. No. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Remember, the asset protection of an IRA is for your personal liabilities that they can't get a judgment against you personally to then get into your IRA. You can file bankruptcy personally and the creditors can't come into your IRA. But your IRA is responsible for its own liabilities for assets it owns, like the rental property that, or the fix and flip that something happens and the IRA owns it without an LLC. So now you can use the LLC for lots of things. We gave a lot of real estate examples. It's common for crypto clients. Uh, even a lot of clients do hard money lending on short-term loans. They want to work the deals faster, or maybe they're doing non-performing notes and they want to collect on them easier using an LLC and being the manager. So there's lots of good instances where the IRA LLC makes, makes sense. But remember, you don't have to do it for everything. Okay. And that's what part of the console could be in getting educated on this is to know when does it work for me? Can I ask you a question, Matt? And I don't know the answer to this. When would you say there's a certain type of asset you have to use an IRA LLC? I think the fix and flip, you have to. If you're managing it and there's a lot of money going in and out, I think for the risk involved, for every contract that's got to get paid, supplies got to get bought, you know, there's a lot going on there. And let me say this too. We talked about the checkbook. You can have a debit card with the LLC too. Let's say you're the fix and flipper and you got to order stuff online or, you know, you got a cabinet custom thing you want to do. They're not going to wait for a check. You, you know, you find some at Home Depot, but do not get a credit card. Okay. And don't get it sucked into that because you want the points and everything. Do not get a credit card because you're generally signing a personal guarantee, which violates the IRA rules, but you can have the debit card. What about my IRA wants to buy a Airbnb in Cabo San Lucas, Mexico. Yeah. I mean, that one's tricky. That one I would recommend a property manager for a number of reasons. Right. Well, of course. You could but, do an LLC, but Mexico is not going to recognize your LLC. And in Cabo, like most beach towns in Mexico, you have to use an actual trust. You have to go through a bank in Mexico to do for a non-Mexican citizen to own real property. So that was a that was a, maybe it wasn't a curveball, but that was a, that was a change up maybe. That was but, a but, you, but no, I, and I'm sincerely asking these questions, Matt. And I know you've got to text your assistant and tell him to um, tell him that you're going to be late for your appointment here that we're five minutes over. But, but let me ask this, because I think, can an IRA own assets out of the country without yeah. an LLC? Yes. Well, no. Good point. So like I said, can an IRA saying. own assets out of the country? Yes, without an LLC, Ooh, no. So let's say you come to us, you're like, I want to buy a foreign asset. Okay. Real property would be the most common one. Last one I did was Belize. Mexico is a little quirky because of this bank trust thing you have to do in Mexico. So that's why I kind of gave a dorky answer on that. That's okay. <laughs> let's say you want to buy, Belize is one I did recently. You set up a US LLC, okay? Because we're not going to let your IRA, nor will any IRA custodian, go to buy real property in a foreign country. We don't want directed trust company on some foreign asset. We don't know what the heck the language is. We don't know anything about it. I mean, we don't know the tax laws and rules and what's our registration requirement down there. And you don't want to pay us to figure it out, trust me. So the easy solution is we're going to set up an LLC in the US. If you lived in Florida, this is where that client lived. We did a Florida LLC. His IRA owned the Florida LLC 100%. The Florida LLC went up and owned a Belize LLC, which owned the property. And it's not an LLC, but it's the Belize equivalent of an LLC, which in turn owns the property. And that's a good way to get around it. And, and we've done okay. many, many times with clients over the years. So to buy foreign property, an IRA LLC is almost required. Yeah. And then number two, cryptocurrency? It's not required. There's some ways you can buy it with an IRA without an LLC, but it's way more expensive because they charge like a 10% fee to do it. Mm. So um, if you're buying a lot, it's going to be pretty dang expensive. Most 
crypto investors that are heavy with their IRA definitely use the LLC okay. because you have to link a bank account to it. And you're not going to link your IRA account to it. You can't do it. You need an actual designated bank checking account, which you can do with an LLC business checking account. Um, and so and I got a video on that, how to buy crypto with your IRA um, on my YouTube channel and a whole chapter in my book. Yeah. Okay, cool. Well, do we want to just share two fun examples before we leave? You get two, I get two. Yeah, I'll, or, I'll give, I got one and then you can give one and maybe, cause I don't, I don't know, I got two back to back, but I got a good one. Okay. okay. And this one's a little more, I want to say complicated. It's freaking cool though. Okay, this is, okay. I've taught this in my supercharger IRA class, okay? And if that, I have a whole recording on this 45 minutes or 30 minutes in my summit, if you want the down at the long one. I have a client, I had a client that came to me years ago as a real estate syndicator. He wanted to basically raise money to go buy real estate, but he wanted his Roth IRA or Roth 401k to do it because he wanted to build money up tax-free in the Roth. And we went through a lot of reasons why that you couldn't do it, but we found a different way to do it. We just had his Roth IRA own an LLC 100%. He'd put 50 grand into this new LLC. And every time he did a new deal, it was a new LLC. Okay, so he sets up property one and he'd name him after the property he was going after, like, you know, Green Avenue, LLC, okay? It's the apartment building on Green, Green Avenue. And he did multifamily stuff, kind of buys them, fix, fix and flip basically a multifamily. Um, and this fix and flip process is three to five years, by the way. It's not like a six month thing, but he'll go and he'll put like 25 to 50 grand in the LLC and fund it and own it 100%. He goes and gets the property under contract. He's usually gonna spend about 20 to 30 grand at least getting it under contract as earnest money. And the rest he's gonna spend on some inspection costs. He sends his contractor in because he's always got the kind of stuff he wants to do on a rehab. He's got like a construction manager that goes and bids the thing out and figures out here's what we need to do to kind of do our thing that we do. So he's got some money into it. But before he closes, he goes out and he raises a one or $2 million from other investors who come in and buy into the LLC later. And so, but he's going to keep maybe 25, one fourth to one third percent of the ownership of the LLC and the other 75% to two thirds of the LLC is going to be owned by these investors putting in cash. Well, think about it. Then my client's putting in 25 to 50 grand, but then he's going to go raise a million or two that, that and, but he gets to keep 25% to 33% of the ownership. That's a, he basically yeah. almost 10 X is his return immediately just upon funding the LLC. And so there's, there's some key steps you have to do in that sequence of IRA owns it hundred percent at the beginning gets the property under contract with the valuable asset, puts some money into it so it has an asset at risk, brings in the investors who are not disqualified. It's not like his parents or his spouse coming in, okay? Other investors unrelated who buy in at a higher value essentially. And now he goes and acquires the building and he's got a 25% stake in a multi-million dollar apartment building he paid 25 grand for. Oh, I love it. I love it. Okay, now this is where the yin and yang of Matt Sorensen and Mark Kohler really pay off. Because for some of you big hitters out there, you got that, you loved it, and you're like, oh my gosh, I need a phone call with one of the associates. And by the way, let me say, you don't have to talk to Matt Sorensen. You can yeah. talk to or Mark Kohler. We've got, we've got six associates that do a fantastic job walking you through these issues. So if you call the law firm, they, they'll help you out. Okay, now my- say that, that little concept would work with a duplex, with a single family. I mean, yep. I just happened to give the bigger one, but- Yep. yep. Now, my example is is more um, simple and lower dollar value. And this is why I say the yin and the yang is that some of you that are big hitters, we can handle that. But I also love the, the little base hits, the little small ones that really get you their gateway drug to self-directing and they get things rolling and they get your family involved. So here's an example of what we're doing. And I just closed the deal. Um, the delivery has not taken place. Uh, contract is to be signed, but we got our handshake. Um, so if you're a Yellowstone fan with Kevin Costner, Amazon Prime, this is right up your alley. Okay, so we have a little LLC that we formed in our family. And I won't tell you the name of the LLC because I want to be private about, again, assets we keep private. So, but I've got an LLC. It has eight partners. It's got all of our families Roth IRAs. Every one of us have a Roth IRA. And you may say, well, I make too much money. Oh, you can have a Roth. Go YouTube, Kohler Backdoor Roth or Sorensen Backdoor Roth. We both have videos out there. We can walk you through it. 
So no matter how much money you have, you can have a Roth IRA. Yeah, so we have all, a backdoor Roth IRA page at Directed IRA that goes through the steps and has a special app for it that does the whole thing for you. Yep. Oh, if you just call Directed IRA or live chat, we've got a little chat window during business hours. The team will get you set up with a backdoor Roth immediately. Okay. So in this Roth IRA um, scenario, each one of the family members have only put in about a thousand to two thousand uh, dollars. About a Christmas ago, I told the kids, I said, "Whatever you put in your Roth IRA this year, I'll match it." So I did kind of a family company match, <laughs> and it yeah. was just. And they all got a ten ninety nine for it, by the way. But um, mm -hmm. I put a little money in everybody's Roth IRA, depending on what they did. One of my kids put in like two hundred dollars, and they were like, "You were serious?" Yeah, you snooze, you lose. So anyway, <laughs> so based on that LLC. What everybody's little Roth IRA has, they have their investment in it. So we have about 16 grand in this little LLC. Nothing to, you know, be on CNN about. But um, what we're doing in this LLC are several things. And I'm, one of them I'm going to share right now is we are going to buy four pairs for $5,600. Now, let me, you may ask. Wait, what? <laughs> four pairs. A pair is a mother cow and a baby cow. Okay, so I have a rancher out in southern Utah that I just had a phone call like, with. Are these like the uh, the Harry David pears? Like, what are these pears? These are must be delicious pears. Yeah. yeah. Now I apologize. I want to say this is forty eight hundred dollars. A pear goes for about twelve hundred bucks. That's a mom cow that has already had a calf. Now, if the mom cow is pregnant, it's actually cheaper. But once she has the cow, because obviously. You know, the bun's in the oven. We don't know if it's going to come out well. So, but once right. mom and baby calf are born, we are going to buy the four pair for $4,800. Now, you usually buy pairs in the spring. So, I cut the deal now because a lot of ranchers are making their plans for the spring. So, here's our numbers. We're buying four pair for $4,800. Cool. Now, what do you do with this? Well, they go out to, the rancher puts them out to, um, I learned all this over the last couple of years with this rancher buddy of mine. And I want to be like Kevin Costner someday. I actually went to Jackson Hole and bought a new cowboy hat. So I look cool. But anyway, but in a nutshell, you put these two cows out to pasture throughout the year. A rancher is going to charge about, um, was it 19? Anyway, I've got the numbers um, all written down on a pad of paper. I didn't bring it to this podcast today, but they charge a, a monthly fee to, under the feeding and, and inoculation to keep the cows healthy. In the fall, you have two options. One, you can sell the calf off at auction, or you can keep the calf and let them, if they're a, a mom, female calf, they could start giving birth themselves. So what happens is either you sell the calf or you keep the, the mother cow and she just has another one and da, 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 but you build up your own little herd. So we're building up a herd of calves and cows in our little IRAs, our little Roth IRAs. The net return after expenses on a pair is you'll make about 900 to 1,000 every year after cost. So on this little, these four pair, I'm gonna average about a 16% return. And a mother cow is good for about 10 years of birthing. So then you get to sell her at auction and get all your money back. So I'm going to generate a 16% rate of return with these cows. And if you have a male calf, they sell for more because they could be a bull and um, or a steer and they sell for more. You Plus, if you get lucky on the price of meat, the rate of return can be better. But this could be from anywhere from a 16 to 25% rate of return on our little Roths. Now, you may not think that's much, but you watch a Dave Ramsey video on the rates of return in a Roth IRA at an 8, 10, or 12% over the lifetime of my kids as they're starting to invest, this will be easily a million dollars within about 15 years. I know that sounds insane, but you can do amazing things with a Roth IRA. So if you wanna to go to YouTube, type in million dollar Roth Kohler, and I've got a great video there that explains it as well. But Matt, that's what we're doing. We're buying cows. I don't think anyone expected that to be the example to be given on the podcast. I know, isn't that funny? <laughs> I know, but I love it though. All right. You watch Yellowstone and you're like, I got to do that. So, All right. Well, one. man, we broke some new territory today on the podcast. Um, thanks so much, everyone, for hanging in on it. Um, the IRLC is a really cool tool, really common. 
and it's used for a lot of good reasons. It can really be a valuable tool to have out there for those of you self-directing. So uh, thanks, of course, for listening. We'll have another episode coming up. Make sure if you're new, go back to episode one. If you're like, I don't get this, I'm lost a little bit, go back to episode one. It'll help. Um, we're trying to do them in sequence so you learn these concepts in sequence and uh, stay calm and self-direct on. Oh, I love it. I was going to want, I wondered if you were going to do the slogan. There it is. Okay. All right. Keep calm, self-direct on. See you next week, everybody.